Today, we're going to talk about the big news of the week, which was the announcement of Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s uh, next opponent, Marcos Rene Maidana, which is going to happen May 3rd, pay-per-view, boatloads of money is going to be made by both guys, and we're going to help them make it because we're all going to buy this pay-per-view and watch it. But what we want to talk about is the situations that led to this fight and the implications for the fighters around it. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with first Marcos Maidana and the person he just beat, Adrian Broner. Now, Adrian Broner had a rematch clause for his fight against Maidana. He exercised said rematch clause. Maidana said, hey, I'm supposed to be having a baby soon. Uh, April's too soon for me to fight. So maybe we could do it at another time. Then he decides to fight Floyd Mayweather Jr. a week or two later. And that fight would have been less than a month later. Yeah, I don't... So, what's the deal with that? What do you think, Rob? Mayweather said, sit your ass down, I'm fighting him next. <laughs> yeah, um, Floyd himself said, hey, Broner, you don't need to fight this guy again. Maybe you should fight on my undercard, maybe fight at 140 against, you know, somebody credible, but somebody you can beat. Get your name back up there, get your confidence back up, and then maybe you can challenge him again later. But right now, he's got the gravy train going. I'm going to make this money. You just sit back and have a seat. You basically pulled a big brother move. Let's face it. I mean, this bodes well for Broner because... I hate to say it like this, not that he needs to build his confidence back up, but he needs a fight where he can like, okay, I can still compete. Now, do we know if he can still compete at 147 or 140? Who knows? He did skip a few weight divisions to go to 147. Yeah, um, and, and he does have talent too. He's a good fighter. He, he may not have the dedication that Mayweather has, which if he's his big brother as he claims, that should be what he's emulating rather than the, the money Mayweather character that he's trying to emulate. But go ahead, Rob. And let's let's face it, financially, it's the best thing that it can do because we all know Brona has a personality, not necessarily one that we all like, but to be on to be on pay-per-view. Yeah. He's gonna fight another big fight on pay-per-view, whether it's Danny Garcia eventually, whether it's Mir Khan. It, Regardless of who it is, they're going to fight. And to be on the Mayweather undercard, um, probably in the, um, the last undercard before the Mayweather fight, right. is a good look for him. He's going to make some money. He's probably going to look great at doing it. And, again, it's just setting himself up. And especially a card of that magnitude, especially after everyone saw El Chino beat the Mayweather clone or the guy who's like Mayweather. Everyone's going to be turning up like, can he do it again versus Mayweather? You know everyone's going to come up for that. Especially yeah. on May 3rd. Yep, Seiko de Mayo weekend. Mayweather knows exactly what he's doing, man. He, he, he pulled a Kaiser Soze on you guys. Um, if you haven't seen The Usual Suspects, you should watch that movie. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. That's right. Um, we'll go more into it when we break down the fight closer towards the fight time. We got, what, like two months before that happens. That's so right. right now we just wanted to, you know, get our thoughts on the news of the week. And another, and another thing, and a lot of people have said it, we've said it, Mayweather fights who's hot, which means who's going to bring in the money. Let's face it, he fought Canelo, who was undefeated and was just beating people left to right. Got him out of there. He fought Robert Guerrero, who had beat Andre Berto in uh, Celtic ID. Who, two guys who are always in the mix. He was the hot guy, and of course his mouth got him into an ass whooping that his they, he couldn't catch. He just he talked himself into an ass whooping. Let's face it. Yeah, true. Now the loser of the Mayweather sweepstakes, Amir Khan. 
For a while, it was the worst kept secret in boxing that he was going to be the next guy to fight Floyd Mayweather. Well, if you listen to Amir Khan, it was. Um, he shouted to the hills, multiple press releases every week. I don't know if you guys read the boxing news, but it really got kind of nauseating. This guy, his uh, sense of grandiose and just, I, don't, I can't even get the words out, but this guy really believes in himself. And he's a really good fighter, but he didn't do anything to earn himself a fight with Mayweather. And he has a good resume. Let's not get it twisted. He oh, did yeah, he beat El Chino. He did that was win. like two, three years ago. But he didn't win. His resume is there. Yeah, yeah it's there. Unfortunately, some of those uh, people on the resume gave him an L. Like Lamar Peterson. That's right. And uh, Danny Garcia. In a bad way. Um, the Prescott one, you know, that was a long time ago. He kind of uh, got past that. But those last two, and then he fights uh, Carlos Molina, looks decent, but he's not even a contender. Right. Then he fights Julio Diaz, a, formula, a former champ, and he struggled against him. That's right. So, and he hasn't even fought at 147. So, all of those factors kind of led to him not getting the fight. And probably him running his mouth all the damn time about him getting the fight. Oh, I signed a contract to fight Mayweather. Like, Mayweather was like, you, what's on? You, I didn't send you a contract. What are you talking about? So he probably talked himself out of the fight as well as his performances in the ring. And, and it's funny because I'm pretty sure Mayweather took a look at his fan base as well. I'm going to be honest, I love British fans. You guys are freaking awesome because y'all show up to anything. Yeah. I don't care if it's against someone I like. I love seeing y'all out there. That Ricky Hatton versus Mayweather fight was awesome. I never seen support like that from someone to come 3,000 miles across the, across the world to see a fight. You guys are awesome. And yeah. I'm pretty sure Mayweather looked at the fan base. El Chino's fan base, Argentina. Uh, South America, and he's probably going to get Central America just so they can all root against Mayweather. Amir Khan, the British fans, aren't really that behind him. Yeah. And he's kind of polarizing in that way, so Mayweather was like, I could fight him, but he doesn't really bring the fan base yeah. like Ricky Hatton did. Right. So, uh, Money-wise, business-wise, however you want to say it, not just there. You're gonna have to like really get hot in order to fight Mayweather. That's Which right. someone like Tim Bradley, if he beats Pacquiao again, he needs to buy out his contract. Exactly, because yeah. he would be the hottest fighter in that weight division. That's most deserving of a fight with Mayweather. Yeah. Our opinion, our two cents. Uh, if you disagree. And you disagree. <laughs> yep, that's right. That's it, guys. Let us know what you think. We got the comments section. You can hit us up at Facebook, Capital Combat. You can hit us up on Google Plus, Capital Combat. You can send us an email, Capital Combat at gmail.com. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's the game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter.